Facebook. Buenas noches, Club Familia. Aquí estamos, el nuevo Corona Cast. Eso lo tenemos a la izquierda, arriba, el famoso, el lava cake, el frisco fa. <risa> tenemos al famoso, a la cara, la cara bella, la bella cara de 3G Producciones, 3G Club Familia, Matt Brocha con. Pa, 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 pa. Tenemos a mi hijo, mi hijo preferido, la persona que yo amo en mi mundo, Patrick O'Neill. Pa, 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 pa. Y último, el, el, nuestro MC de nuestra noche, tenemos a Ricardo Sá. Y este es el video, ¿eh? José Mercado. Placer, todos conocerlo. Esta noche le vamos a estar hablando de rojo. ¿Cuáles son las cartas rojas que nos van importantes? Amarillo. I'm kidding, guys. How you doing, guys? <laughs> that was beautiful. That was I would love to see the faces so of so everyone. Sure. Like, what the fuck? I felt, it, was like, it was like I was watching Telemundo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I got, like, lost between, like, a soccer game or, like, <laughs> <I can> tell. <laughs> or, or, like a wrestling match. <laughs> All right, run it back in Italian. Let's go. Eh, buona notte, familia. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could actually do it, but... <laughs> Pizza, macaroni. <laughs> the spice. The La scrub familia. La scrub familia. I hope everybody's doing wonderful well as we approach this wonderful Memorial Day holiday. So while you're while you're flipping some burgers, you can listen to our uh, our Spaniel and our our nerding out over red, yellow bands. ETC, etc. Let's get this party started off right. Uh, awesome. Red, the color. Red. We yes. got we got peel off. We have Yum. not peel off. Yamcha, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that everybody always forgets. Yamcha. Yeah, we got we got broken cards. We have we have Yamcha and we have Yamcha and we have Yamcha and we have Wolfing Fit. I mean Yamcha and we have Four and. We got six stuff. Yamcha, <laughs> Jose, Frisco, you guys have been digging a little, little deep into that leader. What are yeah. your initial impressions? The good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, the good. The good, the ca the deck is aggressive, has potential to be aggressive. The It's it's got good removal tools. It got uh, good burning tools. Um, I love the fact that we can play Miraculous Comeback. Uh, it's a card that I always loved since set two. Set two. It's really amazing. Um, the bad is you don't have a really a good influential unison on turn two. Um, yeah. yeah, like, but you have a really busted unison on turn three. Really busted since turn run, which I think is going to be very influential uh, on, on the meta. How do you and say? Decent. It's decent. <laughs> and um, then. Uh, the bad thing I don't like about Yamcha is that you have to reveal every card that you draw to make sure that it's a red card. That's the mm -hmm. only thing. I, whether it's going to be that influential, I don't know. But I, I, in a, against a hand destruction deck, because they will have full information of your, of your hand the whole time, in that case, because you're going to be very little hand, it could be very uh, significant. So against a deck like Goku, the green Goku, could be significant. Um, Frisco, Pat, I know Pat also has been looking into it, yeah. so take it over. Yeah. Me to John. Go My for thoughts. it. Like, I, I, I'll so jump it after. I actually really like where Yamcha is as a leader. I uh, my the biggest drawbacks are the ones that Jose already said, like lack of a powerful unison on turn two. Like you look at like Green's two drop unisons and you look at Red's two drop unisons. This is not even like this is night and day. Like I would I would like to have had Demigra in Red. Like it, that's the one drawback. Uh, besides like obviously your opponent knowing what cards you're drawing. Um, to the deck. Having card selection is really nice, though, on the leader. Like, it doesn't seem like much, but having the choice between two cards is, like, amazing. I'm sure anybody who's played Surge Goo kind of already knows how good that is, but um, at first I thought, like, maybe I would get punished for just trying to play like, Mono Red in this deck, but, like, Mono Red's really good. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of good cards you could have uh, in this deck, and then on top of that, like, like uh, Jose said, Sin Shenron's really busted on three, and honestly... I like all the free, like, free exclusive cards for having the Innocent. I think both Yamcha and Wolfang Fist are, like, incredible. 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm the only one that likes Wolfgang Fist. I know, like, oh, I love it. I love it a lot. It in your list, but like, it's basically a zero cost 15k combo that sometimes is removal, and that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. I really like that card. Um, and then the Yamcha, the free play one, is uh, it feels like it's one of the more impactful free cards that we've gotten. Um, it's amazing against like uh, Big X, for example, if you get that far. Um, just being able to just pop two guys off board is great uh, to stabilize the game. Uh, and overall, like, I originally was worried when I was building the list that maybe having only three and four drops as my win cons in the deck wouldn't allow me to play, you know, be able to close the game, but that is pretty much not the case once I added Miraculous Call on the deck. So, mm -hmm. um, it's just a good deck. Like, he's just a good leader. He can play up or down to anything. He can win games quickly or he can take it long. He just has access to a great card, so yeah, awesome leader. I think the coolest thing that Yamcha provides is something that the Vegito blue leader provided is that you can bring your opponent down from three to zero relatively easy. And then once you put your opponent into that position, they have to start thinking about over comboing or over extending to protect life because at you know at any time you could burn life and just win the game. Um, or even even four to zero if you decide to use like Champa or uh, Kai double strike and then use like a and then a burn spell after it kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a good leader. I don't know if he's generically good because he's pretty specific of what right. he wants to do. Right. Um, but yeah, I think he's okay. I think he's I think he's gonna be one of those definition of beasts. I don't think he's gonna be over the top. I don't right. think he's gonna be right. terrible. But I think yeah. he's just gonna be. He's, he's gonna be yeah. good. The the synergy with the unison is amazing. The fact that uh, mm -hmm. Yamcha has so many tools for burning. Like Red has so many tools for burning. The the Shinran, uh, Shin Shinran allowing you to be able to swing at actives and debuff them before that is very significant. With yep. Miraculous Comeback, you're already swinging to something that's a 5k or 10k. Active mode. It can swing active mode, and it's pretty good. And also, if you have, uh, you are able to trigger Bunny Boma. And bring the 100 percent, the uh, oh, uh, Yamcha, the, hy the hyena, or the hyena. As you say, hy oh, you Yamcha. can bring the hyena, but the hyena doesn't burn. I think. No, it, it doesn't. Yeah. It's just generic. So, uh, I was going uh, for <laughs> like Yamcha at 100 percent. You can if you you can uh, bring uh, by triggering the Bunny Bulma. When you do the the burst five, he becomes mm -hmm. uncounterable. So you can also burn three in that case. Yeah, I like he also he also. He also uh, puts more cards in the drop to trigger other ball, uh, bunny girls that are in your hand. Right. Yeah. Really yep. Or over wrong. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, Matt, do you have any other ideas on the best ways to trigger that additional burn ability through the leader? Um, the big, the ones that are like probably fairly standard, I think, is if you wanted to do Frisco talked about today, trying to do like catastrophic blow with it. Um, Richard, it's good. you need to use seven leader for catastrophic, don't you? I think I, I think you might. I I think it was he was talking about. Uh... No, no actually, catastrophic. You just need you just need to have no board or a red blue yeah. multicolor Goku. Yeah. No yeah. Power. Yeah. Yes. So so I know Frisco had said that, and then Zap. I know that you had leaned into SS3 scramble. Um, of course, you'd have to play around any sort of counterplay, which is fairly easy if you think about like um, Sin Shinron, and then the biggest combo is playing like max copies of Sin Shinron and almost max copies of Broly Crown Retribution. So you're just got, like constantly either getting double discards or discarding any sort of counterplays your opponent could have, so which is really powerful. Um, but those came to mind. And then even just like the standard five drop deflect Goku that came in the set, you have the Nappa that was in set six, um, mm -hmm. th which yeah. comes down and can deal a damage of burn. Um, you have the six drop blue red Goku as well that makes it so like if you deal damage you deal an additional damage so it's like it makes all your stuff like deal yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like it's it's pretty decent okay cool so ratings everybody um, one thumb up for Pat, the Pat, did, like, did Pat I want to say something real fast. just just because you talk about the crown like I have to plug it like the ability to look at your like top two with Yamcha discard the crown your opponent's turn and gave the 17 to pick up crown is oh hard. yeah that's yeah yeah okay Z zero thumbs up if it could win a local one thumbs up if it could top a regional two thumbs up if it could win a regional one two three i i think the one was local yeah no, no, no thumbs zero, local. Zero, is, zero is local one is it could top a regional two oh yeah i could top i could top yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure Dark Horse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One and a half. One and a half yeah. That's the thing. Like, I don't know if it's good yeah, enough to close out like a major, 
I don't but know. I think it, if, it, it feels if it, it feels really format dependent. Like I think if yeah. if, if, if like if you're playing against anything that's like wide board states, I think that like Yamcha and Red Ever Removal could just like really excel in that format. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do think that's, the deck has potential to be really good, and it's just like yeah, it you just, you get to play so many generically good cards, and I think there's so many different color combinations you could do between mono red, red blue. Um, right now in my version of the list, it's mono red. I'm doing just the Wii Super Combo just the one that's like minus 10 to something because i just feel like it's if i'm already doing minus 15 stuff for free anyway might as well just kill things with my super combos exactly. so it's like so I, I feel like there's a lot of different ways where you can just do some really tricky things um to just accrue advantage and that's one of those decks like where it feels like just like a really ch like almost like a true mid-range deck because like it has this aggressive like start and this aggressive end but in the middle of the game you kind of just get kind of get the outmaneuver the opponent like with the different cards yeah. available to you so it's like either, a really, it's a really cool mid-range deck yeah either yeah, yeah in the, the 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 mid range it's funny uh, it's interesting because you can do it either by uh controlling the board mm -hmm. or controlling their hand exactly Which for red it's really cool yeah. it's really really cool yeah it, it, it's, it's, i like the deck a lot it's true mid -range. Yeah, and, and like most mid-range deck where it's like, I'm just trying to play my, my win condition sooner than everybody else, this says that if you go too deep into your strategy, you're not going to have the life to survive. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how that pulls the mid-range in the other way. Yeah. Um, so there's also the Pilaf leader, which I'm the one that has explored the most. Um, the leader itself is <laughs> fairly generic. Uh, you definitely get the very, very consistent turn three awakens, which is really cool. You have 12 copies of Shu, uh, my Pilaf in your deck. All you need to do is see one of them. And you awaken, um, bar any counterplay, which is pretty cool. Um, the being able to use two energy to play three 15k bodies is super cool, especially in tandem with uh, Fearless Pan. Uh, past that, the, the combo that I like, I think. You... Oh, we're losing you. No, Zach. Ricardo. He's, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's like frozen. He's frozen yeah. in time. Okay. Well, we'll pick it back up then. Well, once he comes back, we'll talk about peel off. Let's talk about. Right. Let's just swing in right into the unisons, and then once after we talk about the unisons, if Zap comes back, we'll swing back to peel off. <laughs> um. All right. So let's talk about. The Shenron unison, right? Sen Shenron, <laughs> the boy. Kind of alluded, kind of yes. The Yamcha, right? Yeah, we talked. We did talk about him. I think he's uh, an amazing unison. Minus two. Look at the hand. Getting rid of any card is absolutely busted. And basically, it's a three drop 20 20k that could just look at your hand and pick out anything if you just want to do that that turn um shrinking guys amaze he's a 20k too right three drop 20k yeah, is already, yeah he's huge good. he's huge he's so hard to get off the board yeah yeah he's like, hard. He, he basically comes down at, he basically comes down at four markers like it, it it's exactly he, feel, well, he he feels like the second best unison in the set yeah i, I am inclined to agree. i think he's the second best unison in the set like honestly the biggest drawback that he has isn't even his own fault. It's that he's in a color that doesn't have exactly. a way, like because the other colors go turn two strong unison, and then they progress to a three or a four later on in the game if they need it. And then it's just like, well, red doesn't have that setup, so it's like he's exactly. kind of like you know you have like a turn two blind spot where you can't use all the sick counterplays that the other decks are getting to do. But it's like the the trade off is oh you get this absurd turn three that is like a blue yeah. white on hand control. And a huge, big dumb beater with utility on top of it. Richard, Richard has actually traveled back in time to tell us about Pilaf and how Pilaf, Pilaf, Pilaf down, dominated the Series 10 slash 11 <laughs> mega. <laughs> Correct, <Yeah. laughs> right, yeah. but, but yeah, uh, so the, the cool thing you can do is, so the unison, or yeah, so it's like you sack, you sack the three guys, you give your unison triple attack, and then you warp the three guys to play giant robot Voltron and then ideally you use Capricious God um, comboing either Hazy Dispatch or Nappa and then when you hit the board your triple attacking Voltron gets uh, double strike too and that, that's mm -hmm. ideally how you, how you close the game out um, other than that um, it's a pretty traditional red deck it just has, it basically has an Obuni it has like a turn, it's like a two energy Obuni instead of four energy of boonie that untaps one um and that's about the ceiling of the deck um anyone else had any opinions on uh, well, one, the one potential for i guess we might have lost you here but what yeah. what unison are you using with that? I, i'm pretty sure it was Sin Shadow, right? yeah well yeah i think Sin Shadow is the correct unison uh, just because it's better um the issue is that the deck doesn't have much to do on two 
Um, yeah, so you use so, Vegeta instead. Yeah, and it is kind of cool because when you give him triple attack, he either plus fives or he shrinks something by five. Um, mm-hmm. So you, you can definitely tell the intention there, but that leader feels so medium the rest of the time. Yeah. Okay. My, my experience from just, like, testing it, like, solo and octagon, understanding <laughs> it, and then uh, watching the, like, one or two games I saw Zap play with it is, like, it feels like a better version of the Ginyu deck. Like, the Ginyu deck is pretty much <laughs> the same deck. It's just this deck is, like, actually feels like it can win the game on turn three or turn four. But, like, it doesn't, it can't go, like, it can't go much longer than that. It's, like, yeah. if, like, Ginyu was, like, out the gate, like, on, you know, maybe, a, like, an eight or a nine on turn two, and then, like, it futters out to, like, a four or, like, a three on turn three or later. Like, this deck is, like, we're puttering out to, like, maybe a five or a four on turn four instead. So, it's, like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're slightly stronger and we go a whole extra turn. But it's not he, too much different. Yeah. The issue is Ginyu doesn't have anything to do after its follow-ups. Red inherently has things it can do mm. on the turn after it plays on the dudes. But no, I think that, that's a good synopsis. Uh, any other major takeaways? Any other MVP cards that you saw looking at Red? Yeah, we were, we were talking, talking about, about the Unison. When you, yeah, the... You see, so we were talking about, in the middle of talking about Sin Shenron and how um, good he is. Um, again, Matt was saying it's basically like the second best Unison in the entire set. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fair. It's very oppressive. Yeah, the moment the moment it hits the board, tick up, and then it now at that point you're just there's this big tension point that's built between if I am playing things and committing things to the board, then how am I going to be able to keep them alive? And then it's like you get into this weird point that if if the Sin Shenron player, the Red Unison player, is going first and they play it up, play that on turn three, it's very unlikely you'll be able to catch up unless you're doing something that's like absurdly busted, or you're doing the same exact thing, or you're playing a game of resources where you're just trying to get their hand size down to zero. Like that's like the real only way that you can kind of bring yourself back in those games if that card comes down on the third turn of the game and you're like a battle card like base strategy like you want to get things on board yeah yeah and, and to add to that it's very cool that the combination of the leader or the unison being 20k mm-hmm. and the ability to get information from their hand yep. gives that leader a lot more longer that unison a lot more longevity than the, the average unison at first glance yes right yeah right. like you said it is a really impactful turn three thing like um you know sandy's been hyping the the gex deck that can win on turn two like the red decks are well, some of the best decks that are equipped to do it, not just because of like Don't get me Super started. Saiyan Blue Kaioken, but like if you go first as like a deck like Yamcha, right? And you drop Sin Shenron on, on three, and then you just plus it, you can basically outright kill two things with that effect. Your leader swing and the Sin Shenron being able to attack active mode, if they're still active, that's going to most likely be another two kill cards because you're going to be uh, yep. ahead on cards uh, in hand in that matchup. And then you have free counterplay Yamcha. To back it up as well um it feels re- like that that matchup feels incredibly uh play draw dependent like if, if yam is first and has a decent hand I, I don't think he can lose to big x mm-hmm. because of sin Shen. yeah yeah no, i think that's a good synopsis you know the, the big question is in a format where so far blue green blue and green are trying to play their unison on two uh red or actually yellow mostly tries to play unison on two as well uh, but red is pretty exclusively waiting until three and four to play their unisons. So it'll be interesting to see how the format unrolls to see if red can can afford to not do that. It's inter- it's it's interesting you mentioned that because it's um, in testing as yellow so far. I actually like not spending turn two or turn three on unisons at all. I like having the energy available for Raiders War Cry, energy available for Bergamo, and then playing like windmill slamming my unison on four. Because in that way, it's like I've already established this board and already established this pressure, mm-hmm. and then now I'm playing this card that puts me even further ahead, as opposed to like playing this unison that I'm not even really going to be able to protect in yellow because like your counter card isn't that good, your free negate isn't that good, and there's no real way to protect your unison from getting killed if you're playing it on two. Like it's very hard, it's very hard for it not yeah, to die. I think. On yeah, yellow, yeah, it's a game playing against four. Four. <laughs> <It's laughs> no the run red card that. He doesn't care about Warcry. <laughs> yeah, as I'm saying, he's he's fine. Like if you're playing red, that's fine. But if I'm if I'm a yellow leader and I play a unison on two, I'm screwed, bro. Like it's, 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 it's so not I gonna live. Should we talk about the other unison that we haven't talked about, which is I think Frisco's the one that's the most keen about it. 
Oh, uh, no, like, uh, I think I think that Vegito is really good. Yeah. Vegito, yeah. Vegito's solid. Yeah, we'll spend a couple more minutes on, on red. Um, yeah, I think Vegito is, is pretty good. I think the only other real interesting card to take away with red is the super combo. Uh, Bulma is kind of interesting. Um, Pat, you, you've been thinking the most about that. Um, any outstanding combos you've theorycrafted? Um, I don't know. It's really weird because it's like I started with how can we best use Bulma? But Bulma, unfortunately, is only on your turn because, like, the best one drop Earthling I can think of is Baba. Mm -hmm. and Fortune Teller, yeah. Me, yeah, which led me to actually the Android 17 negate because in Yamcha negating, uh, like, putting a Baba in the drop, either you play on turn one and you just melt him off the leader. 17 to pick up Baba to give yourself a, a pseudo Sensu Bean plus a card draw is really insane. Um, unfortunately, you can't do that with a Bulma. Um, Honestly, like, the only, like, really insane things you can do with it, um, uh, like, Baba will net you a card draw. If you play red-green, uh, Chi-Chi will let you, obviously, just, you know, draw cards, and you could already have done that. Uh, Intensifying Power Trunks will let you go into mm -hmm. Chain Attack, so you could potentially play it as a Chain Attack deck. I don't know how viable that card is, but since, basically, Counterplay basically shoved that card out of the format, but there's definitely something to be explored there. Um... Honestly, the best thing feels like it might be peel off, just because being able to just you know just play a guy that just lets me draw my unison is pretty nice. Honestly, uh, my super combo basically lets me just get a dork board and actually replace it with a unison or a potential super other super combo or uh, mm -hmm. you know, a Yamcha to win the game, something like that. Like it's just pretty nice to have a super combo that's like, all right, well not only did I draw the card, but like. I get to look at the top number of cards and be like, all right, I got the counterplay, I need it. I got the win con, I need it. I got the Vegito, I need it. Gotcha. So it sounds like the takeaway for it is um, not not to it's, think too highly of it right now, but to definitely keep it in the back yeah, of your head it has, later. It has a lot of potential, but like, I, I started no with Alma, mm -hmm. and then after, like, as time went on, because it's funny, we we didn't have the red cards in Octagon to test it, so I started with the, uh, the two drops per combo old one that you used to play in pan right mm -hmm. and after a while like i was like guys it's not a proxy anymore we're just sticking with the old bulma super combo um and yeah that's that's kind of kind of how it feels like, yeah. it's, it, it's good it's just not good enough for me to want to like really dedicate it's just it's just too it's just too conditional for you to dedicate so many like deck slots yeah, to it yeah i used to have like like a 10 or 12 package like, the cool thing about it, it kept getting it kept getting back. Yeah, the cool thing about Bulma is that it can play itself, and it and it inherits you to if you want to play Heartfelt play in the deck because it can um, uh, pump up a mono red card. So, for mm -hmm. example, like a Topo, since you're probably playing Topo if you're a red deck, so you can always sack your Topo for Heartfelt play, and then like um, and it can always just play itself, which is pretty cool. Or if you play Bob in the deck, you can play Bob. But you already talked about that. Uh, and, then, um, and then of course, Hasty Dispatch loops, which is always fun. Yeah, before you said heartfelt play, we gotta remind people because we all had the same problem come up in testing. Offering is a keyword it's skill; a, it yeah, does a, not yeah. trigger Yamcha's leader skill. We always um, another another cool thing about well, when Pat comes out, the other cool thing about Bulma is that if you're playing Miraculous Comeback in your deck, um, it's a good way to shrink your hand size without actually losing value. So if you Bulma and then you play a Baba and then you're losing a card out of your hand. But you're playing a guy, so you can actually shrink your hand size without actually over comboing for any reason. Right. Talking about value, yellow introduced two new leaders, and both of them are mad value. Uh, Matt, I know that you have spent a lot of time thinking about Sinchan Run and a bit of time playing it. Do um, you want to chime in a little about that archetype? And I, I think we kind of decided there's two main routes to go with it. Yeah. So. Sin Shinron on the front side isn't something that you get too excited about. It's like, look at the top five cards for, you know, your Shadow Dragon. Has it a weakened condition at three or less life? Or playing a unison with a cost of four, draw two cards, untap one. So his awakening ability I'm already excited about. Because drawing two cards and untapping one is way better than any of the alternatives. Um, and then, on your awakened side, play generic leader when you attack draw a card. But then, not only do you get to untap all your Shadow Dragons at the end of your turn if you if you for some reason play the game long enough to where you acquire six yellow energy you can tap all of them 
and then play seven different shadow dragons. So, so let, let me let me. So there's there's another leader that drew a two and tapped multiple energy and was significant in that format. Was it baby? How baby? Oh, just, okay. Yeah, just just saying. Okay. Yeah, it might, be, saying. might be. Might be. Might be. And and you had like ten bodies aboard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was the problem. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. But one, hey, but hey, man. Okay. Yeah, just so so remember, if I live long enough, I get to tap six yellow energy, and I get to play seven different shadow dragons from my drop area. It's pretty decent. So just six energy. Decent. Yeah, decent. Decent. But <laughs> but anyway, so playing the archetype so far, it's this weird. It's not. I don't want to call it control because it's definitely like it's it's like. A, it's like a tempo deck that just like actively is is out tempoing you which is something that's like in most most tempo decks are usually not playing cards on their turn whereas this deck is trying to out tempo you just by playing cards on their turn which is kind of different we haven't seen it before so you just start let's say you go first or no yeah whatever you play your thing your opponent swings at you you go into the four drop you choose their leader you're like okay your leader can't attack next turn okay you stop your opponent from drawing cards then the next turn you're like oh you know what i'm gonna evolve into this nine drop which has revenge blocker and it's a bloodlust for every single thing that comes into play and it's not once per turn so whatever and then if it dies i get to draw three cards and two Ooh, draw two draw two cards sorry and get my one star ball back and then you know I can just well be three cards. Plus, plus three and draw three are slightly different, but, but not by much. Yeah, but I can just I can just do it. I can just do it again. So you do that, and then you're gonna get to turn four, and you're still gonna have more than three life because when you're playing fours of monster super combos, you're playing some Bergamos, you're playing some Raiders of War Prize, you're gonna get to your fourth turn. You're gonna play <laughs> Machuca 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 Cabra Machuca Cabra. You're, you're gonna play that, and then you're just gonna take over the game with the most busted unison, and then you're just gonna get the turn six, and then you're just gonna keep rebuilding a board over and over and over again. So DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah, another one. So you just you just and then what? another oh. one. You just out you out tempo them offensively. You disrupt them. They have to deal with your stuff. If they deal with your stuff, you gain an advantage for it. Then guess what? You're gonna get it all back anyway. So it's just you know it's the definition of decente. Decente. <laughs> but I mean overall, uh, I, I I I prefer blue yellow because I think since Ubin's like incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So that that's that's my take right now, and I think that. The deck, as is, as posted, is pretty close to just being a tier one strategy. Pretty close. I agree. Um, it, that deck is absurd. Yeah, uh, yeah. The um, deck definitely has some weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Jose, you can probably speak to some of the weaknesses we found in our testing so far. Yes. So, the it is very weak, very weak too. So, if, you, if anybody playing... Uh, uh, traditional red strategies with hardcore removal, which is what I was doing. I was trying to make uh, the old red baby work without the baby changes, playing red good stuff with uh, with uh, the, the Sin Shenron Unison and the Vegito Unison. Uh, you're not playing battle cards. They're not leaving. They're not staying. You know, like Zab literally did his ability four times. You know? Great. Three. Three? Yeah, that, it felt like seven times. That's how I felt. But... Well, maybe it's because I, I, I played 18 guys. Because uh, In case you guys didn't catch, uh, the text on that leader ability is uh, with different names, which means it's not looking at the character in the bottom right corner. It's looking at the top. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, with your Sin Shenron, you currently have a one drop and a four drop and a nine drop. You get to play all three of those. Yes. And then right now we have three... Uh, Haste gen rounds of one drop and two fours. You get to play both of those. One of the four drops give you a draw, or let you resurrect something from the drop. You usually yep. get another evolution. Uh, then you go right back into that, and you get to freeze their leader. And you yeah, get this. That's what I was going to say. Like that. That was that was the very challenging uh, point because you, when when all this stuff comes out, there's all these tapping effects and all these freezing effects. That the only moment that you have a chance is on the counterplay window. But if you get to that point, it's too late. So the, the only chance is that you get the, you get close to decking them out by the fact that they have to draw every two, every time by mm -hmm. the same run. But then again, as a red leader, you don't draw as much. If your leader's not drawing you an additional card, then you're screwed. So um, the that's where 
we that I was gonna say before that the vegetal unison is so good because the vegetal leader prevents you from prevents them from doing that. If mm -hmm. they yeah. do the minus two from playing battle cards via skill. Yeah. Yes. Now, and now you also notice that Sin Shenron, uh the unison was very strong against the yellow Sin Shenron deck, right, Jose? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And, and uh, why was that? So that uh, the ability of discarding, uh, sorry, debuffing two creatures on the board by minus 15 is very significant, especially when the Shenron, the, the distinct Shenron deck is, you will have a, at least two of the dragons on board really quickly, because mm -hmm. when you can tutor them with the, the one star, the the one uh, the one dark star Dragon Ball, the two dark star Dragon yeah. Ball, so. Um, it's it's and it's very consistent getting there. So mm -hmm. like you need to have on turn three if you're playing red, you need to have the the Sin Shenron uh, unit on board. And also the fact that the Dragon Balls don't get uh, debuffed, they don't die. You need to swing at them. Yep. So and Sin, Sin Shenron can attack. And attack. Them. Allow your board to attack. Which, which cool. that was really in, in, intense because I swung with my. With my scene turn run to one of the Dragon Ball, so uh, twenty thousand to one, and Zap <laughs> bitches all <laughs> in, <and> defended, <laughs> and he was able to recover. So that that was my turn three. Then he went to turn four, playing Michikabura, and turned the tide completely. Mm -hmm. Like now yeah. I'm now I'm now I'm just defending. Now I just want to take control of the board somehow. He, I need to be very conscious of what every play because when, every time I'm gonna swing, he's gonna defend it. And then on uh, tap one of my cards, and on top of that, he's gonna freeze one of those cards when uh, during his turn. So it, right. it was very, uh, it was very very cool interaction because I feel like the decks counter each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was very very good. Uh, uh, it was yeah, it was fun game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on one end, yeah, your, your mass removal kind of punishes. If I'm paying six energy to play a bunch of guys, but you're blowing them up with three, it doesn't feel great. But on the other end, yeah, the yellow deck. Uh, it wasn't decreasing your hand size directly. It wasn't directly getting card oh, yeah, advantage. Exactly. But it, it was passively by by freezing your leader and by tapping your energy, you couldn't yes. get as far. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you had you had like twelve cards in hand uh, plus all the time. Right, and I was just like plus sixing every time I I hit six yeah. energy. It was interesting. Uh, on the flip side, uh, I think the Go Tanks leader tends to be a little more aggressive, and I, I think we kind of decided that was a a really generic leader. Uh, but Frisco has spent a lot of time with the intended package, and Frisco, maybe you can speak a little more on how, yeah. how strong you're feeling like that is. I think Go Tanks is generically good, and you can actually play the package without actually committing that many cards in your deck, um, because I like to play the Gogeta Unison on turn two, um, and then I like to just pitch the Go Tens and Trunks into your drop, pitch Saiyan Instincts, you get to pitch Restrain, so you can save your Negate later. And then whenever you want to just jam your go tanks, you could just pitch two cards at your hand and just do it at any time you want, which is pretty sweet. Um, I also like it as blue yellow just because uh, Sentu being you, every, there's a lot of things that are increments of two in the deck like Bardock, Bergamos, um, mm -hmm. but also go tanks has dual attack. So if you you know pay three, being up the go tanks, it's 30k dual attack double strike, which is uh, decent. You know, uh, I I always wanted the go tanks in my hand. It's really weird. It's just like it's removal. It's a lot of pressure, and it's like I just wanted to almost jam it like every turn that I could. So, I think the deck is really good. I think it's going to be generically strong. It's yellow tap stuff. You can crack back pretty strong with the go tanks, and you don't even have to like fusion targets is not even an issue in the deck. I have four of each right now, but I actually might just shrink it just because when you see one, it's always going to be there. So. Um, yeah, I think it's really good. Cool. When you're playing that leader, did you find that it's best to take life frequently and, and try to awaken as quickly as possible, or try to play more of an offensive passive game? I think it's depending on the strategy that you're playing against. Um, I think against, uh, and it depends on the cards in your hand. Uh, so if you're going like on turn three and you have like a Bardock and a Bergamo, you might want to take a life just so you awaken and you can just have you could just you know play Bardock and Bergamo on the same turn if you're looking for an aggressive right. route. It's just looking at what you're mapping out for your turn. Typically, I don't like to take it like on the first swing, but then after that, it's like all right, now it's like kind of taking a little bit longer. Maybe I'll start doing it now. Um, yeah, and it's just like if you're at five life, you probably want to take it and try to use your energy wisely because you don't really want to go from like five to three or five to two. Essentially, mm -hmm. you want to stay at four. Um, so it's either like 
if you're at six, you can stay at a high life, or if you're at five, you probably want to take it and do something with your energy. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a great summary. Try to use that life to, to try to time when you awaken for when it's most beneficial. That's yep. good. Uh, Matt, any other really cool synergies? I know you've been brainstorming the deck a lot, even if you haven't got any too much game time in with it yet. Anything else you want to explore with that leader? Um, so I think just the, you know, Frisco playing blue yellow, myself messing around with mono yellow, doing the fusion stuff and just trying to do as many fusions as possible. So like playing multiple parts of the chain. So playing both, like some copies of both four drops, the seven drop, and just trying to make sure you're getting that plus 5k and critical seems like something. And then I also want to keep testing out the three drop, um, Goku to see just how impactful that is. And then, um, of course, there's also taking, you know, doggos and taxes, you know, which taxes archetypes are always my favorite, um, and implementing it with that leader since that leader is, you know, able to self-awaken, has untapped two, and then basically just being able to play, you know, your Bergamos, your Zamasus, your huge boards. You can play, you know, Gotenks plus Bergamo if you want. If you want to have Successor 12 for Selzeno, you can play Chilled the Cruel, mm. um, Shapil, Row, like, you know, just being hyper energy efficient having and then i i love the fact that the leader's choice to take a life and draw a card because it's like yeah i love being able to use that extra life on like ss3 like last straw just like that saying kaba effect because it's like unisons are just such powerful guards like playing one drop double strikers just feels like the go-to thing so i love that i love that that leader gives you the flexibility of like letting you use your life the way you want it which is really cool um, so those are the directions I'm going in right now. We're just like really focusing on fusion to maximize the backside. And then also just going the route of, you know, doggos and taxes because nothing is better than making sure your opponent can never play the game. And I think that <laughs> uh, hit, hit, hit revoker. I'm actually really excited to start testing as well, because now that unison's open up a counter window, being able to just tap your opponent out completely for the turn feels decent so so yeah uh I'm, I'm gonna mess around with some hit the revoker as well but overall i think the leader is very good i think that everyone i think people are hyping up how generically good he is and it's like being generically good is one thing but when other colors have better supports archetypes and unisons as well yeah. exactly it makes it, it makes it really hard to for it to be the best so it's like if i had to rank sin shinron versus gotenks i'm gonna take sin shinron because his deck just feels much more powerful like mm -hmm. Overall, whereas like Gotenks is really good, and I think yeah, you, can like, put, you can put them in different shells, but at the end of the day, Sin Shenron has the exactly. most powerful of the. It's like having having you're basically gonna have a specialist deck that is really good at doing something versus doing a leader with a strategy that is gonna be okay doing every single strategy. Exactly. Exactly, and, and to be good at everything is to be great at nothing. No, mm -hmm. I feel that, exactly. and um, it doesn't help also uh, that uh, Raiders Warcry feels like it's starting to lose a little bit of. Of gas in yeah. this format, um, mostly because you, yeah, yeah, you can't get a lot of value out of it defensively right now. Because if they hard read it, you can just uh, keep on swinging at unisons and, and never get an opportunity to to skip there. So, so you find yourself yeah. playing aggressively. That's why. That's why I said that if you're playing yellow, you shouldn't play your unison till later. Like you should. Yeah, just not think it. Yeah, because it's yeah, like it if you if forcing your opponent to attack you, it's like it's like back in the day where you know you're playing set one and you just like put a battle card down and don't swing with it because you want your opponent to swing at you. It's like you just mm -hmm. apply that same logic. I want to force my opponent to attack me, and if they don't <laughs> attack me, then I'm just going to get to my fourth turn anyway, and it doesn't matter. So it's like okay, I'll just leave my energy open. They have to swing at me, and then I'll use my Raiders will cry, and then I'll kill the little unison on the crack bats since I have a 20k double strike. No, that's a, that's a great summary. Uh, Pat, thinking about the some of the yellow cards we've seen so far, uh, any any ones that you think that are particularly uh, powerful or, or need to be respected? I mean, Matt already hit on it immediately. Uh, Mechikabura is absurd. I, I think it's honestly, in a vacuum, it's the best user in the entire set. Um, yep. It's just so powerful. And a deck like Sin Shen can probably take it long enough. Um, uh, I would think maybe Flying Nimbus might be needed like in some matchups to make sure it's a thing but the card just has so many absurd components to it like it's a blocker it's a blocker it enters high loyalty it draws cards it stops aggression against you um and against decks that are trying to play like like go tanks for example is trying to play like a, a pretty sizable body right away the worst case scenario like the floor for the card is attack with a 15k and then just take your opponent's go tanks and try to kill them with it that's the <laughs> floor of the card that's not even like the ceiling. Um, the longer right, he goes on, it's 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 just absurd. Yeah, we saw somebody in in the group. They posted a picture. They uh, 
they stole someone's cell Zeno and then swung with it, and then successor 12 did into another one turn five. <laughs> got, got a huge discard and then swung twice more. Yeah, it's it's, Crazy. it's a pretty disgusting card. Take victory strike and once it's mm -hmm. like stop a victory strike, steal a victory strike. Yeah. I, 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 the thing is, I know the minus four is there, but the the thing that will stick out for that card just being broken and absurd is just the auto and the plus. <laughs> like, drawing like, a card the, every turn. The auto and the plus. That's what's yeah. Like I said, it draws you a card. It stops your opponent from attacking Nasty. you, and then it taps. It taps leaders. The minus four, which is the nail on the coffin. And you just exactly. and you just exactly. do. It's, it's just... Yeah, it, it, it's really good. Like I say, if your opponent missed sequences one time against you when you have Mechi Kabura, it is value. Mm -hmm. It's like a supreme value. I think one other yellow card that people aren't really talking about is the yellow super combo. Yeah. Uh, part of it part of it is because Zamasu is so great, and Zamasu into Bergamo is still one of the most powerful plays that, that a deck with yellow cards can make. Uh... But the fact of the matter is, you can go. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, the, 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 the super combo is um, basically compared to other yellow super combos, it has no downside. It's yeah. four or less. You always draw a card, and you just get this option of, in certain circumstances, you just get to blow up a battle card and rest it instead of. And there, there are times in the mid game where that's that's valuable, but it's an extra option. For like no additional expense, and that's something that is uh, something that yellow has been given a lot to this game, and it's a little annoying. But I'm like I'm like I'm like Frisco though, where I'm greedy. I always want to get paid. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want I don't want to wait till I'm at four less life to get paid. Like I want to get paid mindset, now. My friend. <laughs> I was gonna say like you know I want I want my cards to pay me right now. Like Bulma Super Combo. It's like I don't want to wait. Like I just want to get paid now. Like <laughs> why why are you making me try so hard? Like just <laughs> just pay me. Four less. <laughs> I'm just like quickly skimming through all the yellow. Cards, but like, on the but I gotta get a say, like, anything else we may have missed? Because like, I gotta say, honestly, like Shin Shenron, at least to me, like, <laughs> I, I think that Gotex is pretty generically good. But the whole Shin Shenron archetype and Machi Kabura just takes the cake. Um, the seal, like I said, the seal on those cards are really high. The floor on those are really high. And if Shin Shenron is not like right. amazing now. This is what he's with with two dragons. So five more to go, baby. One one yeah, card five. that we we could touch on is because uh, I know there's a lot of overreaction to the Goku GT card. If they pay an ex if they spend an extra card, they yeah. have to tap an additional energy to 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 use it. As a four side Goku, absolute annihilation. Sure, there you go. Um, I, I I think I think I even said it too. I think that card's gonna be busted. But after thinking about it, I think it's gonna be good in certain matchups, but then probably really bad in others. Um, yeah. Tapping three for it. It's going to be kind of rough. You almost want to do the chain with it just so you're more energy efficient with it when you want to actually play it or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, so it's, it's very similar to Swift Regeneration Cooler a lot of the time unless you're trying to win over the course of two games. Yeah. But do you know what you know what else people are really overreacting about? <laughs> what is that? We recently <laughs> received an update to the Forbidden and Limited list. No in the way, did we? Our game. I was not aware. He did. They they banned Frisco Foss from playing every red Gogeta card. <laughs> I'm out. Bye guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, darn time. I'm quitting. You're quitting. Is that, is that a good is that a good day when Frisco can't play Red Gogeta? I'm I'm quitting. You're quitting over the Dragon Ball Super card game. I'm list. quitting. Yep, I am. I, I assume that's because of the quality of the list and not how unnecessarily I read people are. Um, I didn't. I didn't sign up for pseudo rotation, bro. <laughs> it's not. It's not what I signed up with, bro. I didn't sign up for this company to make cards and then ban them and not tell me about it first. I expected a letter in the mail <laughs> sending me my receipts and money back on every card that I bought that got banned. This is I think it's preposterous. I think uh, I think you have to be kind of naive for not seeing for seeing some of the stuff. Like if you play test any of the set like before this got released, like first of all, you already, you already realize unison specified cost is absurd. It's like it's like model color, right? So you already kind of know. Like to think that this one card was just gonna obliterate the entire set that was just gonna stay alive was. Wait, 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 wait time out. So so you're saying that they. Bandai is removing cards to also make money. Yes. It just came back to me. No, they, they are not making money. Not on my watch. And then <laughs> also, you had another card that basically says, hey, 
you want to play unison on tier two cool i'll just play this free card and then you just spend 200g on zero value so good luck <laughs> okay. right. so so hear me out hear me out hear me out all right so picture it i'll try United okay, States. So we, we need to take a drink for this. 2018. Okay. <laughs> Set three. Yellow gets released. Super rare. Bardock the Progenitor. 1k, 10,000. Pick up a life. Swap it out. Play it again. Okay. Do you remember the, the re initial responses to it? That card is dumb. It shouldn't exist. Flute. After, after testing it, that card is dumb. It shouldn't exist. Bandai makes a mistake. They eventually ban it. Two sets later. Gogeta Hero Revived. Initial impressions. This card is dumb. It shouldn't exist. <laughs> they play it. This card is dumb. It shouldn't exist. They print a silver bullet to it. And then they, they still eventually ban it. They acknowledge their mistakes. One time, one time, they recognize ahead of time that they made a mistake. A year ago, when they designed a card to come out six months later, they didn't plan two to three sets in advance. Whatever. They try to preemptively make a mistake, or preemptively fix their mistake. Everybody poops themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loses their mind. No, it's, 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 I mean, I went on a rant when we talked, and I said the people that are upset are the enfranchised, hyper-competitive, people that are looking, trying to take advantage, people that are just trying to play their Android 21 card. Those are the people that are that you're upsetting right now. It's like, it's like, Matt, 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 Matt. It's, it's, to me, it's like, hyper competitive. it's a tier four deck, bro. I know, but it's like, <laughs> it's like you, you just, you just thought that you were just going to be able to walk into your local and just, you thought you were going to be the smartest kid in the room. And just, I'm going to ramp the violent predator in this monocolor format. And I'm going to be the best of my local. It's like, <laughs> no, no, like, <laughs> you know, they, they took time. It's obvious. They took time. They were like, oh, you know what? We really want to like get, like make a product in series 10. That's like new. We're doing a bunch of starter decks, right? Which is what they did. It looks like they're trying to attract a new player. And you know what they're trying to prevent from happening? That new player trying to play their new cards and then just losing to a singular card in the most yeah. feel bad way. Violent Predator is. is the, is a terribly designed game winner. Anyone, terribly. Anyone? Anyone who's ever been on the receiving end in a game like Force of Will or a game like Magic, it's been on the, the, the receiving end of losing all of your resources, just having the ultimate life effect. <laughs> it's the most thing ever because you're no longer allowed to play the game. And but you have to wait three more times before the game's over. Yeah, you either have to wait two to three turns, the or ultimate you're able to do nothing until you eventually lose like 10 minutes later, or you're just told to pick up your cards because there's nothing. You know, I would have been cool if they had just given Violent Predator Quad Strike. That would have been fine. <laughs> like, just, just, just kill me. Just, just kill me right now. Yeah, I still can't understand how that it is. Like, I still can't understand. Like, as somebody, as the person who I feel like has Violent Predator the most amount of people in the country, I still can't understand why it doesn't have like Double Strike on it. Because like the way you have to kill people with this is you have to Violent Predator them, pass your turn. Then Brilliant. play Brilliant a brilliant idea. idea and give it critical and then turn it sideways and hope that they were three or less life and didn't out combo. Because if not, then we got to sit there and do it again. And then when you're again, on your last swing, and again, the last until life, you win. When you're swinging for it to take out their last life, it's time. So you don't win anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no. Like, I played so many, so many hatchback decks when I was running, like, blue green piccolo, piccolo. Or the guy piccolo and then I, when i played it i'm like i'm sorry like it was just, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> i feel bad the last major like not even say major but the last tournament i played before this whole pandemic this guy was like not like a relatively new player but like he's a relatively casual player right he is playing universe 7 starter deck goku and i literally sat there and i never swung at this man once and then i went violent predator and then I sat there and I proceeded to take three to four turns to crit him to death. And he couldn't do anything. He just looked at me and was like, am I dead yet? And I was like, hold on. I'm trying. <laughs> like, Trust me. I'm trying. It, it, it takes a while. And then like, it felt even worse when he sided in dead day against me game two and then plays it turn like one, hoping that I like I see it and I'm just like, cool. So now instead of it being a seven turn game, we're now – an 11 turn game <laughs> <laughs> wait so, like, oh, hold on so you're talking there this card is a bad play experience for the player 
because it's the only way that they're winning the game currently with the with the card pool blue green. The opponent yeah. doesn't want to play against it because they see it three turns ahead of time and then has to wait three turns after it resolves to win the game. Meaning Correct. it's inevitably inevitability for six turns. I don't like actually playing Violent Predator. No. It's just as a competitive player, if I want to play, like we always talk about this, right? If I want to play Malevolence Unbound Android 21, the most efficient way for me to win the game is this poorly designed win con. So of course <laughs> I'm going to play it. <laughs> it's it's just it's that you know I, we have all talked about this when it comes to theory a lot in games and designs and ban list and to me it just like sticks out in my head the most it was it was a quote by patrick chapin and he was talking about bands and he just said it's not about what's fair it's about what's fun like it's it's not it, it's not about what's balanced and you could actually the game could be completely unbalanced which dragon ball super actually is these but game it's, was but not made. It's the most unbalanced play. card game. It's, it's, be a fun game. it's made about it, the format is about what is fun. And do you do you think that Violent Predator is a fun card? No. And next question: Do you think do you think it should exist? Bandai said no. So then they banned the card. Tur oh, yeah. Turl is the Ghost Warrior. Do you think Turl is the Ghost Warrior is a fun card? It's a little bit of fun for the person playing it, and it's for not me, fun for the person playing it. It's, it's super not fun to, to be the guy that's in top 16 of a cash tournament that's unofficially sanctioned and gets hit with two of those turn one, and there's nothing he can do about it besides do this. Mm -hmm. Just twiddle his thumbs. Yep. No, actually, actually he does this. They can like... Yeah, no, so it's just, it's just, you know, thinking about, like, stop thinking within your own... A lot of people think right. about just themselves, the yeah. you know, the and think about like everything. Like think about the overall health of the game, and it's like ask yourself that question. It's like what cards are fun, what cards aren't fun, and then go from there. And then like Big. what cards are like a quality of life decision. Like you know, when we look at the other cards that are on the ban list or the erratas, like a lot of it could be just be quality of life of the game. Like it's wild to me. If, you, if you're really a fan of the game, if you really have a blast. You really have friends where that you hang out with, or you. Uh, forum about the game and this stuff. You should be very thankful about these decisions because we're the we have a team that cares about keeping the game longer and keeping that those friendships essentially, right? Not indirectly because they also they're a business. They want to make money, but then again, the way that they make money is keeping sure, making sure that the game stays healthy for the casual yeah. people. Right, and at, at the end of the day, they realize that every time you ban a car, there are people that are negatively impacted, right? Which means that they did a cost-risk analysis of this is the people that are going to be pissed off if we if we ban this. This is the number of people that are going to be pissed off if it exists. Yeah, and how much? Well, the thing, and like, right? Everybody's how mad much that they, you ban twenty-one, yeah. but like, if twenty-one was, let's say, re like, if it just checks all of the new cards, like. Everybody, you're all excited. You're, you guys are probably listening to this because you're excited to hear our thoughts on new cards. Well, what if those new cards aren't even playable because this one card exists? <laughs> exactly. Which, so it's which, like, it's a case you of wouldn't premise. even want to play the new cards because they just lose to the old cards. It's the, it's the, it's the, the case of Turles. Turles is, was too oppressive for Unison. I think if anyone should have been upset about anything, I think it is the erratas to the surge leaders. Like, I think I think if you're going to be upset, like to well, me, that... I'm sorry, you mean the the pseudo ban, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. pseudo rotation. Yeah, I'm totally over. tilted about Piccolo. Yeah, I am so like, tilted I think about that. I think I think you can have like some sort of right to be upset about that because it's like that product release was fairly recent. Um, but again, it's like you when you have just powerful generically powerful leaders dual color leaders that get bonuses from two different colors and they exist in a game don't you think you're just always at risk like it's like if you ever want to design a good green card or a good blue card and you don't restrict it it's like you're just always at risk always. like always, always yeah. forever it's like it just doesn't make sense to just have cards like this laying around there it's like yeah i get it it may not be tier one in set 10 but you know let's go to set 15 16 17 and you and you prevent and you like let's say you make like a four drop unison green unison that's absolutely busted and it's like all right well i'll just i'm just gonna play with piccolo and now piccolo becomes the best you know deck in the format like it's it can't it's be a, that easy a, that's, a, that's a good example because that's what we were saying earlier in the video in, in the in the podcast is that miraculous comeback may did a miraculous comeback from set two and now he's playable again <laughs> you know it's like a set two card that it was well, probably a dollar well, that, that, that's the thing about a game that doesn't have rotation with a large card pool 
there will always be a card that at some point will make a comeback out of nowhere yeah. that you yeah. do, that it may not be foreseen. Case in point, the right Setsu now, the, the Setsu also Setsu Goku Black obviously before it got murdered uh, this week. Um, but like even right now, Power Booster Vegeta. Xeno Vegeta, the one that's been out for literally five and a half sets right now, it just all of a sudden is like, oh wow, this one card might actually just enable exactly. something kind of degenerate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, collectors, keep collecting. People having fun, casuals, keep being casuals. Competitive people, stop being lazy. Keep <laughs> like testing and figure it out because fan lists are for a reason and they're necessary to keep the game healthy. Because our backs are sore from carrying all y'all. Like, stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. We're all competitive here. Don't yeah. stop being lazy. Put the hours. Figure it out. So, Pat Frisco, I, I want to hear your opinions on Piccolo because at the end of the day, looking at uh, the valuation of uh, of Surge Q, it's hard for me to do that because Beerus and Surge Q were always so similar in so many ways. But I, I think we all experienced so many times where you wanted to build a deck with either a blue leader or a green leader, and you constantly had this inferiority complex where it was uh, Piccolo just does it better, Piccolo just does it better, Piccolo just does it better. Uh, so, so they, I, I it, it seems like that that was the logic behind why they addressed it how they did. Um, if you felt like the the lack of a draw issue was you know was too much of a nerf to the leader, what would have been a good direction to take for that leader that still leaves it competitively viable? while still being clearly inferior to other leaders in certain situations. I'd love to hear if either of you have an opinion on that. Well, something ahead, that Matt and I have talked about a lot. Sorry, if, if you want to go first? Frisco? No, go ahead. We got okay. it. Something that um, Matt and I have talked about a lot is, for, like, the biggest flaw, like, since I've known Matt, since, like, we started talking in set two format, one of the biggest flaws of the game is what we used to call, like, kill boards, like, stall states, right? Where you just aren't... You just don't attack. Like, there's no reason to attack. Um, Piccolo embodies that more than any other leader I've ever seen in this game. Because the thing is, like, 21 doesn't have to attack, but at least gives your opponent ammo as a, as a drawback. Piccolo literally doesn't have to do anything and just accrues all the advantage of, in the world until he's ready to kill you. Like, it's, it's super not fun. And it's super not healthy. It's basically exploiting the mechanics of the game. Um, so definitely I would have liked to have seen it be rather than look at the top card and put it on top or bottom at the start of your turn. I would have liked that have been when this leader attacks it gets that effect. Yeah. Like, that is definitely like the errata I think it should have had. Okay. Um, the other thing is what well, you were talking about, how do we make it so that it's checked? That one I'd have to think a little bit more about. I'm not a hundred percent sure how I would restrict it. Maybe I would say something like I don't know, like this leader can include saying like you'd have to have some yeah. some kind of like clearly defined drawback. You may only um, play Namekians. Yeah. Only Namekians <laughs> and half and, 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 and go ahead. And I think I think Namekians are pretty bad in this game. I Just think the off. biggest drawback of the leader is that it has to run green cards in the deck. So, if, for example, if you want to build, which just sounds terrible, because like. <laughs> How if we're going to a unison format where you want to be monocolored, is that like you have to if you wanted to run Surge Pickle, I you had to build a blue green deck and that's not really the best color right now. And when I was trying to build it, I was like, This just seems pretty pretty bad. But obviously that's not the for the future of the game, right? Of maybe that's not gonna be as bad in the future. Um, but I definitely agree with Pat with the whole attack and to see the top and the bottom card and then all that stuff. I feel like that would have been fine. His surge abilities was already three or less, so that was already fine in itself. But he was very generically good. But the only thing that had to be that had to be bad with it that it, I'm about to say it's that big of a drawback that you have to include green cards in the deck. But that's not a big enough drawback. I get it. Yeah. But well, here's the thing: like you're talking about, you're saying it's pretty bad now. We're talking about things in the future. What happens when we eventually get to the part where they're going to be like, we want dual color in a sense? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. So what happens when we get to like set seventeen or whatever? Like, yeah, dual color unisons, and we get to blue green. Just like, all oh, hey, this leader just goes, <laughs> just goes right back. Let me let me go through my collection. Uh, yeah, just let me let me dust off. Uh, the, let me dust off these cell command as and my piccolo leader and my hidden potentials. Let's go. 
I, it's just I don't, yeah, it just gets much I, it just gets much more interesting where it's like instead of you just have all the blue green X decks under one leader, it's like, okay, well now I can play Soul Striker, I can play SS3, I can play Android 21, instead of everything just being centralized around one thing. Same thing with like red. Yeah. It's like, oh well now I can play Beerus and I can play Yamcha and I can play this instead of everything just being Surge Goo. It's like yeah. it's like and pe- people don't recognize like that being a problem. It's a problem where you're just like well, I really want to build this deck, but Surge Crew does it better. I really want to build this deck, but Piccolo Surge just does it better. Like that's that's not that's not fun for any level of player. Do you know do you know how boring it is to just watch Surge Crew mirrors over and over yes. again because mid range red decks are just good. Like it's like it was basically the SS three meta. Right. I mean, watch all the online tournaments since the pandemic started. That's exactly how I felt. That's why I, I, I just stopped caring. I even I said it to you guys to the patrons. Yeah. Like, I I stopped caring in draft box five format because every format was surge coup, or yeah. pickle, and then the outliers were the suicide aggro decks, the big gohan, the the thick boy Jaren. But right. he never right. gets there because but he's just like, worse. Yeah, for, me, yeah, than that. for me, it's much simpler than that. Is that it's a Dragon Ball game. I want to play my favorite character. Mm-hmm. If my, I, I want my character to be at least playable. Yeah. That's it. With some other strategy, right? Like, I, I I like Baby a lot. I used to be playing Red Baby all the time. And it was hard to be in the meta, but I was still topping with Baby and eh, sweating like crazy. And <laughs> yeah. no, baby got a yellow leader that happened to be top, like top so, in the meta at one point. So, yeah. cool. But, like, Fun question. You playing your, who, your, who do you, your who do you think got it worse, Goku Surge or Piccolo Surge? Oh, Piccolo. 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 Yeah, Piccolo. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Surge is still good. Right here too. Yeah. Yeah. Surge is still still good. Oh yeah, still yeah. decent. Still very decent. Because I, I feel like Piccolo just went to got destroyed. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about this in I, the video that Matt got. Piccolo Surge went from being one of the greatest hand advantage leaders of all time to arguably the worst ever. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I um I put a lot of thought into into into, into Piccolo. And I for me the frustration with Piccolo was that there is no risk, right? The longer the game goes, the more value you get. And there is just no way to mitigate that. Um if it was up to me, I think the solution is I would have actually took the uh, surge trigger and cranked that from three or less down to one or less. Right. And the reason for that is twofold. One, it creates an environment that once you have a double attack, a double strike or a triple strike, they have to respect that. And the card advantage that they're losing protecting from that attack probably mitigates all the free advantage that they got accumulated beforehand. And secondly, it, in, it incentivized the Gohan Piccolo uh, <laughs> uh, chain card. card. Yeah, that, that, that said, if you had four or less, you can now use a leader ability. So it actually gave that card viability. Um, I, I would have explored that if it was up to me. Um, but yeah, I would have been okay with that. <laughs> right, because it, it put some risk to it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a couple minutes left. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a passing thought here. After thinking about the five colors, we have yellow red, green, blue, and black. We'll give everybody a brief window to say what their tier list is among those five colors. Let's wait for yellow. Oh, no, wait. We got yellow already. Yeah, we got yellow already. <laughs> okay. Let's wait for secret rares, I guess. Pat, Pat I'm going to start with you. Yellow, green, black, red, blue. Why you pick me? You want me to What's tier, your tier list? list? Yes, because you're the tier list master. I'm actually kind of stumped on this one because it's like, um, what I think will be the best colors, probably, mm-hmm. green, or, probably green or black. Okay. I think actually, I actually think of, of all the colors in the set, blue is probably the worst. Um, okay. Again, <laughs> <laughs> my, my fair color just feels like it's just they're like, well, you have sense of you don't get anything else. Um, Which is crazy because we we're all overwhelmed with it whenever yeah. we compared it to, to pre set ten stuff. But anyway, yeah, I so kept saying let's wait. Red's yeah. probably in the middle. I think yellow is probably the second worst color. Like. I think Shin Shenron and Mechigabura are insane, but like, I'm not in love with any of the stuff I've seen out of Gotenks, and I think a lot of the yellow cards in general are just like, yeah. So, uh, we're talking about just the cards coming out of the set, uh, green and black definitely are the best ones, 100%. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree as well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, uh, green and black tied at the, at, at a higher tier, uh, I'm gonna put, uh, yellow 
uh, somewhere between red underneath it and, and right up there. Um, I actually think red and blue are pretty comparable. Um, I actually think a lot a lot worse of Sin Shenron than everybody else does uh, in this conversation. I definitely think it's playable, but, but I don't think it's... <laughs> it's, pl it's playable? Yeah. Playable. <laughs> Board wipes. I'm out. Over -sided. <laughs> 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 Perfect information. <laughs> It's fu it's funny because like I, th I think red really I think I think the idea of not being able to play a unison on turn two uh, as a whole puts red down a notch. I, I I think in general that's that's a really important characteristic of a successful deck looking to series ten, and that's why I I think less of red than otherwise. So yeah, so I'd say green, black, yellow, red, and blue. Frisco, Mo, and Foss. So I I it's weird because. I think yellow and green are at the top for me. I don't know which one. I th I think those are going to be really like really fun matches to watch and see which which actually is going to gain the accrue the advantage. I have black in the middle just because it has so many hard checks that I can't give it tier one. Like if it ever becomes tier one, it's like all right, I'll just play Topo and Hatchyak and just like all right, I guess I'll just lose now. <laughs> and it's just like I can never put it at that high when it has such a hard check as start as turn zero. So it's not even like. I have to draw cards and hope I win. It's like, oh, I start the game and you're this leader? Okay, I lose. The so, counter argument, how motivated are you to play with any of those hard check leaders? That's not that wasn't a good question. I'm, I'm all about hatch. I actually enjoy it. I, I don't mind I don't mind Topo or Hatch because it, it's okay. yellow. So okay. I mean I Forget about it. leader. Yeah, no, I, I don't no, think it's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that makes black uh just that much worse just because it has so many hard checks. Um I don't even think blue's that bad. I would put red at the bottom. I think blue is better than red. Um, but I don't know. I don't think there's that much of a disparity between all the colors right now, which is actually okay. fun to say. That's awesome. Jose, So if you're... Uh, okay, I'm going to cut the question a little bit deeper. So when you're saying the card pool of each color... Are you talking about general cards that we received? I agree with the quality that you said. Now, red and yellow have the best unisons. Hands down. I, I No questions in my mind that the best unisons are in red and yellow. Yellow and red, actually, in that order. Yellow the best, red second. Okay. Uh, now, I can agree that the rest of the cards that we received probably the best quality overall as a set yes green and, and black got the, uh, the best set of cards received as a as a as a set um i'm with frisco i don't like playing decks that have a hundred percent chance of losing with something so yeah. that's why i cannot put i cannot put uh black on the top i didn't lose on turn two to that black deck that kills me on turn two i survived in turn four and i almost stole the game so, yeah, no. Um, I think, uh, joking aside, though, that wasn't a joke. That was very sarcastic, but it was true. So no turn two deck killing. It's not true. Um, so I see, I see green uh, up there, um, but I still think that it's going to be between uh, yellow and red. Um, I, I think I, I see a triangle, right? So I see uh, yellow being up there. I see... Uh, green being up there, and then some people playing black, and uh, they sell their soul to the RNG gods, and they see everything. Like the people playing boo, that they were very consistent and were able to to kill everything. Jesus uh, take the nuclear warhead. Huh? Jesus take the nuclear warhead. Jesus just take the yeah exactly. Um, I do see blue as the weakest, so I do agree with that. Um, um, but we're not gonna talk about it today. But I'm still gonna say it. Soul Striker makes blue brings blue to a different level than what we have we talked in the past with blue. I'll, Shit. I'll leave it there. Fisco just whooped me at like seven life left. Anyway, <laughs> ask we'll we'll, 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 we'll that Soul Striker's good. Okay, so question question about green. Um what are the what are the best cards coming out in green in series ten? A burst leader. <laughs> a no, burst so, leader, so, leader. So, so, leader that has a board so wipe. Go, 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 leader. Dormant Our potential. Yankee. Dormant potential unleashed. The free counterplay. Yeah. Bardock unison. Freezy yeah. unison. So, but if you look at, but if you look at the rest of the entire green card pool coming out of series ten, 
Vegeta super combo. As I say, okay, so you have six cards coming out of green. So I do think green gets a lot. If I were to leave, I think you, I think it's also worthwhile to include Hasty Dispatch Dispo. He's not. He's not. He's not a series ten card. Right, but we Green, Green hasn't had the opportunity to play outside but, of Piccolo. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's not a series ten. It's not a series ten card. Okay. Is it? Is it? Is it a series ten card? I mean, I'm asking series ten format, but. I'm pretty sure it's DB2. Yeah, I, I, I was basing mine up. We ain't got time to argue. Anyway, man. Yeah, if you, if, we're taking set 10 as a vacuum. If you, if you want to talk about Series 10 as a vacuum, I think it's, like, yellow, green, and red feel really close to me, like, in Series 10 card pool. Yellow, green, and red feel really, really close. The thing is, is, like, I think yellow loses out because the free counterplay isn't as good as the red and the green one. Like, so I think those are up there really high. Um, so I think those two are, like, really close. And then... Honestly, black and blue, like, I think black overall is introducing a very strong, very powerful archetype, and I think all the cards in it are great, but it's hard for me to take it seriously as, like, one of the best colors. I think it's really good, and I think it's really powerful, but I don't know. I don't want to say black is last. (laughs) Like, that sounds really bad, but it's like, I think that yellow, green, and red are so close together it's like black and blue are kind of jockeying for that next spot. And to me, I prefer blue in series ten. Like I feel like I feel like I just do more powerful things with blue, whereas with black, I can only do the one thing. If that makes sense. Like black's yeah, black yeah. black feels really linear to me. And yeah. so it's like you, you know what? The, Pat Oh no, I was just gonna say, like the, the one thing that makes me feel like blue is the worst is because the unisons don't feel coherent with the trunks. Because like the trunks is a slam dunk, like ridiculous card. And yet, I feel like my only powerful uni- unison is Gotenks, and he does not synergize well at all with the trunks. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think I think I think blue in a vacuum might feel the worst, but when you just throw in like the leaders that either ramp, because I look at Gotenks as a three cost, because it's like if you're SS three, yeah. it's like all right, it's a three drop. Yeah, it's not actually a four yeah, drop, and it's like on the same level as Sinchenron, so it just doesn't feel as bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the other thing to to defend Matt's point. Um, Green and green, and then I guess red too. Uh, they are both gifted with really cool answers to go wide strategies, things that are attacking multiple times per turn. Uh, black still has nothing on that front. zero, so, zero so, cards. Yeah, so black against aggressive decks is not a you do not have any reactive strategies, just hope that you can win the card advantage game. Um, and I think that's something you could you could pin against black, so that, that's a cool observation, like Yamcha. Yamcha is actually pretty good at, at turning it on. Uh, yeah, yeah, Yamcha, yeah, Yamcha, and then of course, is that all you've got in Topo? Um, are so great, great checks to go wide as a whole. So, next week, uh, I'm sure we'll get a couple more promos, maybe tournament packs. Uh, some uh, one of our patrons told us that there's math says we'll probably get some multicolor cards. Uh, so there so should be some a bit to talk about next week. Yeah. But if you're interested yeah. in, if you're interested in more previews, if you are interested in what preset 10 decks are going to be worthwhile. If you're interested in our beautiful voices, you should tune in next week. If you're interested in us talking nonsense at the beginning of every video and me singing stupid things at the end of every video, y hablando español también aquí, puedes aprender español si tú quieres. Darn tootin'. (laughs) In the meantime, check out 3XG YouTube. Check out 3XG Patreon. Check out beardedcollectibles.com, hashtag Team Bearded, the best shop owner in the planet. I, I don't have the, to. Arguably the best father in the planet. Shout out to Alex, who just recently yeah. had his youngin. Congratulations, Woo. Alex. Yeah. And if you're interested in seeing five men dance around while talking about cardboard, I more than invite you guys to check us out. Be to be to be to be to get 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 chicken and can and a cup yeah. Hey. Mm-hmm. Hey. Mm-hmm. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.